Kathleen Sabovi, and I'm going to be performing on the Interpretation Series. I'll be playing on Thursday, March 21st at 8 o'clock at Roulette. My portion of the concert is entitled Earth to Kathy, and uh, I think it was meant to characterize the otherworldliness of the pieces I'm going to be playing. I called it Earth to Kathy. It's actually, I stole the name from someone. Um, the composer, Eric Lyon, is in the process of writing an evening length work for me called Earth to Kathy. But I, it's something I always say about myself because I'm kind of spacey. And, um, uh, you know, I think he picked up on it and thought it was very funny and it should be a whole evening. Um, and I took it as the name of the concert because one of the things the concert features is a world premiere. And it's a piece by Eric Lyon as part of, it's going to eventually be part of Earth to Kathy. But um, I also have, concurrent with this, a project going called uh, Digital Debussy. And uh, basically it's an attempt to bring the idea of Debussy and the harmonies and the aesthetics of Debussy into the 21st century. And it can mean different things to different composers. Um, for Eric, he wrote a piece called Flaming Pairs that I'm going to be premiering. And uh, he, what he did was he took, basically took Claire de Lune and fractured it and made it into a tremendously dense, um, polyrhythmic piece, but it still manages to be very beautiful at the same time. I'm trying to think how I first met Eric. I heard an opera of his in 1997 that I flipped over. Um, I really think he's one of the uh, most inventive composers. He has an incredibly wild variety of things and he takes a lot of chances. I don't get to see him very much. He teaches in Belfast right now, but he's here in New York for, uh, until June. And uh, so I'm delighted that he'll be at the concert. And he's a very fun guy, full of energy and everything. And I, you know, I've been meaning to ask him what he means by flaming pears. Uh, I, I don't know what it means. I know there are a lot of two note uh, motifs in the piece, sort of like there are in Claire de Lune. Uh, and you can recognize parts of Claire de Lune in it. I'm playing a piece uh, by Matt Marks called Dr. Gratis versus Reverend Powell. It's written kind of an abbreviation. Um, and uh, what he did, this is also a, di a digital WC project piece. And uh, Matt is also crazy. Uh, what he did was he sampled two different things and, and sort of processed them to the point where you can't recognize them really. But um, the first thing he sampled <clears throat> was the piece from the Children's Corner <clears throat> entitled uh, Dr. Gratis at Parnassum. And um, I think it's a piece he tried, he played as a kid or, or at least tried to. Um, so uh, that's the first thing. Uh, but it's mostly on the recorded part. Uh, what I play is sort of a, a descant over it. The other thing he sampled was something um, from a movie called um, Night of the Hunter. It was a 50s movie that had Roger, Robert Mitchum in it. And there's a scene in it where um, Robert Mitchum is sitting out back in the yard in the middle of the night and he starts singing, leaning on the everlasting arms. And I sort of play the part of a crooner and a church choir and um, uh, a lot of, but it's a very spacey, spaced out piece. And it's beautiful, very beautiful piece. I asked Lainey Feverman for a piece a couple of years ago and um, she wrote a piece that I ended up including in the Digital WC project, even though she didn't write it as a Digital WC piece. But um, the piece, uh, I don't know if, if you know her music or not, but one of the things she likes to do in her music is interview people and use bits from the interviews um, as the basis for a recorded part of the piece. And she, it's very funny because she can catch 
funny things that you do with your voice, um, even under normal circumstances. I'm sure she could catch many funny things <laughs> right now. But um, <laughs> but we sat on the couch, on uh, my couch in our living room, and we talked um, about sort of piano playing, because she's a good pianist. And uh, we talked a lot about playing Debussy. So um, a lot of that conversation ended up in the piece. So I ended up including it as a digital Debussy piece. At first she was going to write a very motoric uh, kind of piece that would be interspersed with more inside the piano effects things. Um, but she ended up deciding to chuck all the motoric parts and just has the, um, basically it's a piece of tremolos and trills and plucking inside the piano. Uh, so, uh, but it's very powerful. And I, uh, this is something students will really love. I play the piano with my fist in the, in the piece. Uh, and you do get to hear me do funny things with my voice. <laughs> Even funnier than this. <laughs> well, last but not least um, is a wonderful piece by my husband, Randall Wolf. Uh, who I know very well. And uh, he uh, wanted to be one of the first people who wrote for the Digital WC project. <clears throat> he thought a lot about what he wanted to do. Um, he, uh, na the name of the piece is uh, What Remains of a Rembrandt. And uh, it's based on a pamphlet, a kind of a, a, an essay, but it was done in the form of a little pamphlet by Jean Genet, um, and uh, the full title is, uh, I, I probably shouldn't say it because it's not correct, I'm paraphrasing, but it's something like what remains of a Rembrandt when you take all the good stuff and throw it down the toilet or something like that. Um, and uh, so in a way, kind of what he did was, he feels that's kind of what happened with the Debussy. He took some Debussy samples and sort of took away a lot of the context and, you know, what would remain. Uh, the pieces he used were um, a, a little bit from Pelias et Melisande, uh, which is a fabulous opera I saw last year at the Met, uh, and he it's a favorite of his. And that's used in the piece. Uh, there are some gongs in the piece that sometimes people think are gamelan. They're actually not gamelan, they're Vietnamese gongs. Uh, and then the third thing is he, uh, he knew that my favorite uh, Debussy piece, is, it's a sort of personal favorite, is uh, a piece called Homage à Rameau. It's a memorial piece to Rameau, and it's part of um, the collection Image, book one. Uh, and uh, he also uses that. He, uh, put some delay on it and canonic stuff, and I do a cadenza against it. Uh, and the piece, uh, Randy also has, is, is a maniac and writes some really fast, crazy stuff and then some slow, beautiful stuff, and I think he wanted this to be slow and beautiful and have a lot of um, possibility for being expressive and personal. Well, I want to say that I was delighted when Tom Buckner called me up and asked me to do this concert. I've wanted to do an interpretations concert for a long time. And I always thought I would want to do something kind of special. And I think that the idea of Earth to Kathy is, um, it, allu it alludes to me being a sort of otherworldly kind of pianist. I mean, I think you know, I suppose one could say everybody has every trait, but I think one of the things that characterizes how I look at music is how I can kind of make it transcend the notes and the rhythms and how I can get it to really take off and speak into the instrument that it's being done on and uh, really make the audience transcend their everyday experience. And I think, you know, interpretations has to be about something like that. And uh, so I'm really grateful to Tom for putting me on this concert. Uh, it's March 21st, Thursday, and it's at 8 o'clock at Roulette. And the piano there is great. <laughs> and I'm 
really looking forward to doing these pieces on that piano.